Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kaohsiung District Agricultural Research and Extension Station. I am now going to present a briefing about our station. This station was established in 1903 after the Japanese colonial period and the following streamlining of governmental organizations. It has been affiliated with the Council of Agriculture, Executive UN, and has remained under the name Kaohsiung District Agricultural Research and Extension Station since July 1999. Then, in October 2006, the station was moved to Jiangzi Township of Pingdong County from its original location on Minchen Road in Pingdong City. We are responsible for the breeding of crops, improvement of cultivation techniques, and agricultural extension in the area encompassing Kaohsiung City, Pingdong County, and Penghu County. Our service scope and clients include the following. 123,000 hectares of arable land, 133,000 agricultural households, and a 495,000 agricultural-related population. Their corresponding shares of the total amount in Taiwan are 15.4%, 21.7%, and 16.9%, respectively. This station has five business units, Crop Improvement Section, Crop Environment Section, Agriculture Extension Section, Chinan Branch Station, and Penghu Branch Station. For the administrative units, we have the Secretariat Office, Accounting Office, Personnel Office, and Government Ethics Office. We are in charge of the agricultural businesses of Kaohsiung City, Pingdong County, and Penghu County. The tasks include crop breeding, cultivation technique improvement, agricultural techniques popularization, agricultural disaster investigation, and assessment and technical instructions on restoration and recultivation. Here are the research achievements of our business units. With premium quality and high yield, the rice Kaohsiung No. 145 has received numerous awards from the National Top 10 Vintage Rice Competition in recent years. The rice Kaohsiung 146 features early maturing, high yield, good eating quality, premium lodging resistance, and excellent immunity against rice blast. The rice Kaohsiung 147 has good appearance and excellent resistance against lodging, rice blast, and brown plant hopper. It exudes the delicate fragrance of taro after being cooked. It is the first aromatic Japonica rice variety bred by this station and has already obtained awards from the vintage rice competitions in the last two years. For frozen exported vegetable soybeans, we have two major varieties, Kaohsiung No. 6 and Kaohsiung No. 9 which have the traits of large green pod, high yield, and high sugar content, and premium quality. Kaohsiung No. 8 is the main variety of winter exported fresh vegetable soybean, which features cold tolerance, high sugar content, and premium quality. Containing black skin seeds with premium quality and high sugar content, vegetable soybean Kaohsiung No. 7 is the major variety for making honey black beans. Kaohsiung No. 11 is a new variety of taro aromatic vegetable soybean. It is planned to replace Japanese kohomi to become the mainstream of aromatic chamame since it can meet demands of the Japanese market with its high yield, good flavor, and premium eating quality. Kaohsiung No. 12 is a new dual purpose variety for both vegetable soybean and soybean. Possesses the advantage of high yield, good flavor, and premium eating quality. In addition, we have promoted a large farm enterprise business model, prompting frozen vegetable soybeans to become Taiwan's largest agricultural product exported to Japan. The Azuki bean, Kaohsiung No. 8, has scarlet, thin-skinned seeds which are suitable for bean paste making. The prolific Azuki bean, Kaohsiung No. 9, has large-skinned seeds which are delicious and suitable for honey bean making. The Azuki bean, Kaohsiung No. 10, is a prolific new variety having large, scarlet, thin-skinned seeds, which are delicious and suitable for making either bean paste or honey beans. The Kaohsiung and Pingdong region is the main production area of tropical fruits in Taiwan. The core of our research tasks is breeding of the main fruits in our service area and the improvement of cultivation techniques, aiming at enhancing the industrial competitiveness and becoming an R&D center of tropical fruits. For the breeding of wax apples, this station has established an efficient hybridization process. Furthermore, we have screened various cultivars and selected excellent lines, which are suitable for marketing and diversifying production periods. Because of their large fruit size and stable summer skin color, 
At the same time, the station is providing assistance for our farmers to regulate the production period by the use of appropriate varieties and associated techniques. In order to achieve the goal of supplying superior wax apples in Taiwan all year round, the mango, Gaosheng number no. three, summer snow, has an oval fruit shape with yellow skin when mature. It weighs 400 to 600 grams and possesses the flavor of native mangoes. Mango Gaosheng number、no. four, honey snow, has large inflorescence and ovoid-shaped fruits with bright pink skin. Each one weighs 300 to 450 grams. And contains delicate pulp with few fibers. For the variety of lychee Uhu Bao, we have established stable production techniques, which can increase the rate of flowering and fruit setting. For the Indian Jujube, we have bred eight varieties, two of which have market potential. The Honey Jujube Gaosheng Number、no. Seven Cherry is cute with crispy pulp. The Large Shape Gaosheng Number、no. Eight Treasure is juicy, sweet, and crispy. Bred in 2012, the Indian Jujube Gaosheng Number、no. Ten Jade is small-sized fruit with delicate pulp and long shelf life. Bred in 2013, the Indian Jujube Gaosheng Number、no. Eleven Honey is a late-maturing variety whose production period is from late January to March. It weighs 110 to 150 grams with a delicate, juicy pulp and can endure low-temperature storage, possessing great potential for export. The papaya Gaosheng Number、no. Nine Sunlight has sweet, thick red pulp. Its small, medium-sized caters more to the eating preferences of today's family. In addition, we have successfully developed whole cluster bagging and fertigation techniques, which can effectively improve the quality of papaya fruit. The guava Gaosheng Number、no. Two Crispy Pearl is a round-shaped fruit with white pulp and green peel. It tastes crispy and delicate, and possesses the advantage of stable quality in summer. High sugar content, appropriate sourness, and attractive rough skin. We have been conducting the breeding of ginger lily, Oncidium, Anthurium, Tropical Bulbous flowering plants, and Renanthera. For ginger lilies, two new varieties have been successfully bred: the aromatic Gaosheng Number、no. Six and Gaosheng Number、no. Seven, whose flowers have big petals with yellow color adorned on their centers. For the yellow Oncidium pot cultivar, we have bred Gaosheng Number.、No. For Anthurium, we have bred a new pot variety, Gaosheng Number、no. One Happy Melody, which has pink bracts and a special Alocasia adora-like flower shape. The bracts of Anthurium Gaosheng Number、no. Two Ruby are pink with a green rim. It has a four-month-long ornamental period. In addition, we are actively breeding tropical bulbous flowering plants. Currently, several superior lines of Kursuma and Canna have been developed. Also in progress, we have selected 14 sets of hybridization of Renanthera, and the breeding of their progenies is proceeding. For cultivation techniques, we are investigating the effect of protected cultivation on the yield and quality of cut flowers of Anthurium. We apply energy-saving bulbs to electric lighting for ginger lilies in order to improve their yield and quality of cut flowers. A new hydroponic technique with water and fertilizers applied using a micro irrigation system was developed for growing high-quality potted oncidium. In addition, we are trying to establish the techniques of domesticating tissue culture-derived bromeliad plantlets so as to increase their rooting percentage and growing speed, thereby reducing the time of seedling cultivation. Our biotechnology research focuses on its applications to tropical flowers, including micro propagation, gene cloning. Gene transformation, intergeneric hybridization, embryo rescue techniques, and DNA marker technology for crop germplasm. For micro propagation systems, we have transferred the associated techniques of bromeliads, eglionema, and other several crops to the industry. Furthermore, a study on in vitro flowering is in process. It is expected to raise the creative value of the industry. For gene cloning and transformation, several crucial genes for biosynthesis of anthocyanin and carotenoids, which can be used for floral color modification in the future, have been cloned from Phalaenopsis. In addition, we have completed the cloning of an anti-aging gene of Oncidium and established a pollen-mediated gene transformation technique for Paphiopedilum and Phalaenopsis. In order to modify the color, shape, and fragrance of flowers, this station has established intergenetic hybridization and embryo rescue techniques between Phalaenopsis and other genuses. 
Currently, five varieties of Rhynchonopsis and one variety of Asconopsis have been successfully registered. Furthermore, we have also finished the registration of five novel genuses like Shuara, Shinera, Anamopsis, Lenara, and Jungera. With the ORCID hybridization technology platform established by Embryo Rescue Techniques, we assist Taiwan orchid farmers to overcome the obstacles of hybridization in order to breed special and unique varieties. Currently, we have conveyed to the industry with consideration the rights of using the flask plantlets of five genuses and two superior individual flowering plants. We have developed lineage variety identification techniques for Phelanopsis and other Orchidaceae plants by the molecular marker of CPDNAs, hotspot region, and ITAP intertransposal elements polymorphism molecular marker. Research on food processing focuses on the development of associated technology and health products made from special crops, citruses, legumes, and tropical fruits in order to increase the value added and boost the evolution of the industry. For the development of health products, we have established a supercritical carbon dioxide fluid extraction technique which can extract polymethoxylated flavones, PMFs, from the rinds of citrus depressa hiata. This technique can improve the purity of PMFs, which can be applied to health products used to fight cardiovascular disease and Alzheimer's disease. It has also been applied in extracting unsaturated fat-rich pumpkin seed oil and bitter melon seed oil. Furthermore, we have applied low-temperature membrane concentration methods to develop techniques for making high-quality lemon juice, which has been transferred to biotechnology companies leading to a venture capital worth 50 million New Taiwan dollars. With the liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry LCMS technique, we have developed methods which can quickly identify the flavonoids and phenolics contained in the raw materials of domestic high-functional health products. Currently, this station has collected data on about 300 ingredients from 12 crops and confirmed that 31 flavonoids and 13 phenolics come from citrus mitis blanco rind and pangu fangru herb, respectively. Accordingly, we have developed citrus paste and instant foods from pangu fangru herb for the commercial application of the industry. For legume products, we have developed foods made of honey black bean gaosheng number no. 7 and ones made of adzuki natto, which contain low purine and high amounts of antioxidants. Other products, like vegetable soybean tofu made of fresh and delicious beans, have the potential to become another leisure food or delicacy. For the products produced from staple fruits and vegetables, we have used the Orleans process to develop pure brewed pineapple vinegar. We have screened and selected the high functional byproduct of guava production and guava leaf to develop products like tea, capsules and tablets. In order to overcome the disadvantages of traditional dried honey jujuba, such as its containing seeds and its unpopular flavor, we have developed seedless dry honey jujubas. This technology has been transferred to the Kaohsiung City Government for agricultural extension, enabling the farmers' associations of Yan The major business of plant protection is to establish integrated administrative techniques for pest and disease control in our service area. Especially non-pesticide control methods are now promoted in order to produce safe and healthful agricultural products. Many products are in the stages of mass production research and field experimentation, and they are expected to gradually reduce annual pesticide consumption, consequently assisting farmers in producing safer and healthful products. The oriental fruit fly is one of the major pests of tropical fruit trees in our service area, the durable effectiveness of the long-lasting oriental fruit fly trap developed by this station is more than eight months and in the promotion stage. It has presented excellent performance in reducing the density of flies by 88% during the peak period of infestation. Based on the idea of establishing a safe agricultural foundation, we are aggressively developing techniques which can assist the metarhizium anisopliae in surviving adverse environments. The anti-ultraviolet melanin biosynthesis gene can be cloned and successfully transferred to Metarhizium anisopliae and Bovaria bassiana. In addition, we have developed a biological medium comprising the Streptomyces and its adjuvants, 
which can effectively reduce the incidence of damping off of vegetable seedlings. The developing of bacillus and liquefaciens, which has been proved by experiments to be capable of significantly reducing the incidence of the fatal disease bacterial wilt, has also been exclusively granted to the industry for registered promotion. The bacillus liquefaciens can prevent fusarium wilt as well. The bacillus liquefaciens can generate various catabolic enzymes, which have the potential of producing liquid organic fertilizer and additives of fodders. The associated technology and application have almost matured, making it a multifunctional and potential biological control product. Besides the materials for biological control, we are also developing and promoting the application of organic control materials, such as narrow range oil, orthophosphorus acid, potassium hydrogen carbonate, and tribasic copper sulfate, which are safe materials exempt from being regulated with residue tolerance. In terms of breeding cowpea with disease resistance, we are proactive in selecting the fusarium wilt-resistant rootstock in order to effectively solve the problems caused by the fatal vascular bundle disease. In order to protect the health of consumers, we have guided farmers in our service area to establish GAP, Good Agriculture Practice, production and marketing groups for vegetables and fruits and propagate the concept of safe application and necessary sampling of pesticides in order to create safe and high quality agriculture products. In this station we have set up a pest and disease diagnosis service station to assist our farmers in identifying diseases or pests and adopting prevention measures in the crop fields. In order to achieve the goal of correct diagnosis, low and accurate application of pesticides and effective control of pests and diseases. Furthermore, we periodically monitor the pests and diseases affecting the crops of the fields in order to timely issue epidemic prevention alarms, accordingly bringing early warning into full play. With the sustainable operation of soil as the overall objective, the core of the business of our soil and fertilizer laboratory is as follows. Applying nutrition diagnosis techniques to promote reasonable fertilization promoting organic fertilizers to maintain the fertility of soil, encouraging grass cultivation of orchids, developing and applying microbial fertilizers, and reusing the waste of farms. Currently, the station has established nutrition diagnostic standards and reasonable fertilization procedures for the major crops in its service area. Over 4,000 samples of plants and soils are tested for farmers annually in order to provide them with a reference for reasonable fertilization and soil improvement. With the controlled release technique of fertilizers, this station has developed a shallow layer soil ameliorant, which can alleviate the soil's weak retention of fertility and strong loss rate of calcium and magnesium, increasing nutrient absorption of crops and consequently raising their yield and quality. In order to provide the necessary nutrients beneficial to the growing process of plants, we have developed a high-performance liquid fertilizer comprising the formula of balanced nutrients and growth supplements with appropriate concentration. This station is promoting and encouraging our farmers to use domestically produced organic fertilizers and instructing them in regard to DIY high-quality compost. In addition, we have developed the arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi, AMF, and inoculated them to the crops, which can not only assist the crops in surviving adverse environments and reducing the infection of soil pathogens, we can also prompt their absorption of nutrients, consequently reducing the use of chemical fertilizers. We are vigorously promoting the grass cultivation in orchids in order to improve the fertility of soil beautify the orchids and establish superior ecological environment. The grass we recommend can not only increase the buffering capacity of soil, but also offers the performances of high drought resistance, good shade resistance, wide coverage and no cross infection of pest diseases. Hence, this station also provides farmers with the seedlings of the grass for cultivation and breeding. The core of agricultural machinery research includes items for the field management of crops, crop processing after harvesting, and the application of agricultural technology to small household appliances. Currently, we have achieved the following. Weight type jujuba grader. This machine can finish all the jobs from feeding 
to grading in a single integrated process, during which six grades of jujuba, according to their sizes, can be categorized. With the grading speed of about 7,200 jujubas per hour, it is six times faster than manual labor. Weight type pineapple grader. This machine uses weight as the grading index, according to which six grades of pineapples are categorized. This grader, which is three times faster than manual labor, can work on 2.5 to 3 tons of pineapples per hour. Continuous fruit and vegetable skin peeler. Suitable for various fruits and vegetables. This machine, which needs only one operator, can finish jobs ranging from peeling and washing to discharging and an integrated process, with the peeling rate exceeding 95%. Its daily treatment capacities of taro, lemon, and green mango are 2,500, 1,200, and 1,200 kilograms, respectively. Pineapple Farm Multipurpose Management Machine. This machine, which can carry 1,200 kilograms of pineapples each time, has functions of pesticide spraying, intertillage weeding, fertilizing, and post-harvest handling. Small Rice Germinator and Cooker. Germinated brown rice contains many health-related ingredients. Its gamma amino butyric acid GABA, content is 10 times higher than that of polished rice. In order to increase the popularity of brown rice, we have developed this rice germinator and cooker with the functions of temperature controlling, soaking, washing, venting, water refreshing, germinating, and cooking. Just put the brown rice exclusive for germination into the cooker and the owner can directly make steam germinated rice without any hassle. The Chinan branch station is located in Qishan district of Gaoshang city. It was the Chinan working station in 1971 and then was upgraded to the current Chinan branch station in 1983. The major businesses of this branch station are establishing safe and superior production modes of vegetables, application research in organic agricultural techniques, and breeding of crops such as eggplant, sponge gourd, taro, bottle gourd, bitter gourd, cucumber, and cowpea. The eggplants of Kaohsiung No. 1, Kaohsiung No. 2, and Kaohsiung No. 3 were bred in 1998, 2001, and 2009 respectively. Among them, Kaohsiung No. 2 has taken the place of Pingdong long eggplant, becoming the major cultivated variety in this area. Meanwhile, differing from the common white flesh of other eggplants, the flesh of Kaohsiung No. 3 is green. The bitter gourd, Kaohsiung No. 1, evergreen, an F1 hybrid, which is elongated with green peel, has the features of good flavor, little acerbic taste, and excellent chilling tolerance. The F1 hybrids of sponge gourd, Kaohsiung No. 2 and Kaohsiung No. 4, were released in 2005 and 2013 respectively. Kaohsiung No. 4, which can be cultivated in southern Taiwan year-round, carries the traits of early maturing, excellent chilling tolerance, high yield, and good flavor. The cucumber Kaohsiung No. 3, Summer Green, an F1 hybrid released in 2014, bears the characteristics of sweet and crispy flesh, superior heat resistance, and strong resistance to downy mildew. In 1988, the Chinan branch station set a 0.6 hectare organic experimental field in order to perform research on organic farming select varieties suitable for organic cultivation, and develop associated techniques and facilities which can stabilize the production of organic vegetables. It is also vigorously developing non-pesticide control materials against pests and diseases for the farmers performing organic farming. This branch station is actively developing the production process of liquid biofertilizer, the extraction technique of compost tea and the materials of organic farming in order to increase the efficiency of fertilizers on the crops of organic cultivation. The production process of the liquid biofertilizer, which has an excellent effect on vegetables and fruits, has been transferred to industry for commercial production. The Penghu branch station was established in 1965. It is responsible for the improvement of crops and the upgrading and the promoting of cultivation techniques in Penghu County. Jabo watermelon is one of the watermelon varieties, a cash crop of Penghu. Besides the Penghu No. 3 and the F1 hybrid Penghu No. 5, this branch station successfully bred Penghu No. 8 in 2013, a new variety of superior seedless watermelon. Angled lufa is a special crop in the Penghu area. 
This branch station successfully bred the F1 hybrid Pangu No. 1 in 2008. Furthermore, the station also bred a superior line of muskmelon, which could resist powdery mildew. Pumpkin is a universal vegetable, and the Pangu branch station bred the F1 hybrids of pumpkin, Pangu No. 1 and Pangu No. 2 in 2013. This branch station has developed an agroforestry system, multi-layered forest thick planted in single line which comprises windbreaks using athol tamarisks. With those windbreaks, the adverse factors against cultivation in the offshore island, the monsoon winds and salt spray can be alleviated. In addition, it is taking an effort to collect useful native vegetation and select plants suitable for landscaping, windbreak and sand stabilization. The major tasks of agricultural management are assisting production and marketing groups in entrepreneurial operations and boosting the integration and innovation of the industrial value chain so as to increase the competitiveness of the industry. In order to improve the industrial competitiveness of our service area, we have integrated and trained the affiliated production and marketing groups and organized health management consultation programs. In addition, this station has also hosted entrepreneurial operation training courses helped establish brands of domestically grown fruits and vegetables, and guided health-related agriculture to adopt the seamless safety system comprising organic farming, GAP, and product traceability. We constantly assist the outstanding production and marketing groups in joining national contests. Many of them have often been honored with awards such as the National Top 10 Groups, the Distinguished GAP Group, Vintage Rice, Shen Non Prize, etc. Furthermore, we have also organized the evaluation and contests for orchids and hosted expositions, selling and marketing events, in order to improve skills of cultivation and marketing through mutual comparison and observation. The major tasks of the Lab of Education and Information are promotion of education and training, dissemination of agricultural information, and home economics extension education. For education and training, according to the need of the trainees, we have organized courses in the farmer's school, professional farming training classes, young farmer cultivation classes, a farmer's e-training class, and a professional training class for home economics extension personnel. For the dissemination of agricultural information, we release news relevant to agriculture, establish a Facebook fans page, publish monthly journals of agricultural information, and issue professional agricultural information, agricultural technique reports, collective research reports, annual reports, and countryside recipes, providing our farmers with the latest information, knowledge, and techniques. The major goals of home economics extension education are to improve the life quality of farms, promote domestic agricultural products, compile teaching materials, instruct countryside women in operational techniques needed for their byworks and organize large-scale creative home economics events. We have successfully bred 21 new varieties of crops and developed 20 techniques which can be directly transferred to industry. 12 of them have already been granted to industry without consideration. Meanwhile, this station has also established promising biological techniques such as the intergenetic hybridization and embryo rescue techniques between Phalaenopsis and other genuses in order to boost the development of the industry. Brilliant performance has been shown in promoting the superior rice varieties Gaosheng number 139, Gaosheng number 145, and Gaosheng number 147, and the large vegetable soybean farms with mechanized operations. With the annual production value of 2.1 billion New Taiwan dollars, we were the champions in exporting vegetable soybeans to Japan in five consecutive years, 2009 to 2013. The results of our R&D have been widely adopted by the industry, collecting technology transfer licensing fees of $40,059,000 NT dollars in the last six years. In the R&D performance evaluations among the agricultural research and extension stations in Taiwan, this station has ranked number one and has become the pioneer of overseas licensing of plant cultivars bred by the public sector. This station has been established for over 100 years, 
Our major task has always been to benefit our farmers and the agricultural industry by crop breeding, cultivation techniques, improvement, and its extension and transfer. From now on, our goals are to become an agricultural research center of tropical monsoon regions and develop high-quality tropical agricultural products. Furthermore, in response to the policy of governments, we have also put our efforts into establishing a healthful, efficient, and sustainable agriculture for the general public. This is the end of my briefing. We will now move on to the Q&A stage.